and we are going to be looking at topic 374 we are going to be talking about how god sees you we are going to just go and ground this awesome topic so as we start let us dedicate this time to the holy spirit spirit of god you are welcome come and lead us again teach us and give us revelation through your word in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen and amen so we are looking at how god sees you not how you see yourself it is so key to understand that sometimes if our mind is not renewed we have these uh, misconceptions of how we ought to be and forget about how god sees us so christ in you is the hope of glory remember there's christ who is in you and this christ who is in you is actually the hope of all glory colossians chapter 1 verse 24 to 27 now i now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of christ for the sake of his body which is in the church verse 25 of which i become a minister according to the stewardship from god which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of god the mystery which has been hidden from ages from generation but now has been revealed to his saints to them god willed to make known what are the riches of his glory for this mystery many among the gentiles which is christ in you and the hope of glory you are not just a child of god but you as a child of god have christ the hope of glory living inside of you you are the temple of the holy spirit as we can see first corinthians chapter 6 and verses 19 or do you not know that you your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not your own it is so important to understand that the conceptions that we have of what i can what i can't poor me look at me you know are so out of line for what the lord says about us we are children of god and we have christ in us the hope of glory and number three we are the temple of the holy spirit i don't even know if we understand saying you are the temple the god almighty the pure holy powerful god that god believe it or not as long as you have received and been reconciled to him through jesus christ you are his temple look at the creator the mighty creator coming and humbling himself to dwell in us now i don't know if if there is anything more powerful than that i don't know this god can humble himself the creator my creator the powerful god you know the holy god the pure god to come and dwell in me has his temple that is powerful now that is who you are that is who god sees you to be god sees you as a variable person and you are so precious to him romans chapter 5 and verse 8 but god demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners christ died for us you are so precious you are so variable that even while you are still a sinner christ died and laid his life for you and i that is how precious you were the way that god sees you is number one you are god's masterpiece ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them you are his own masterpiece so the masterpiece if if some of you have seen um you know i kind of love art though i am not that <laughs> my hand my hands are not that talented regard in the area of art but i do love art like when i see a nice art piece <laughs> i 
I want to buy it. I want to have it. And when you go and talk to people who do art or whichever kind of art they do, they will tell you there is one piece that they call a masterpiece. And that masterpiece actually defines who they are. So if, if maybe it is even as far as fashion or design, a designer is going to have a masterpiece. And that masterpiece is supposed to explain and kind of express who this uh, designer is or who this artist is. And that is God. Let me tell you something. When God looks at us, we are his masterpiece. When God looks at you and me, no one else, and I'm talking about not the animals and anyone else, but when he looks at, at us that he has created as human beings, he sees himself. He has spent so much care, so much love, you know what, to create you. And you are his masterpiece. If I can just tell you about a masterpiece. Now, when you talk about art and any other fashion or any other industry, it can be the engineering industry. When they have that masterpiece, they protect it, they guard it, they put security around it because they know that that piece is more precious than money. It is more precious than money, that piece. And that is who you are to God. You are God's masterpiece. You are so precious and you are so valuable. Money cannot buy you. And that is who you are in God's eyes. You are also deeply loved. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 to 18. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the sense what is the world and length and depth and height of this love. You know, it is so important to understand that you as a child of God are actually deeply, deeply loved while you are still a sinner. He died for you. He laid his life for you while you were still a sinner. That is how much he loves you. You know, I think I've been just asking uh, the Holy Spirit last week. I don't know why, <laughs> but I just have these times whereby I just ask the Holy Spirit um, a question that I feel is deep, according to me. So I, I was having this question for the last two weeks and in my mind, I was asking Holy Spirit, what is the secret? What is the secret, you know? And you know what is amazing? Saturday, as I walk in, um, as some of you know, I do prison ministry, a couple of things, but I walked into the prison and some people might find the prison scary because I go to the maximum prison of the prison I go to. So you know what I mean by maximum prison. It's like, you know, the highest sentence are in that part of the prison. But you know, I walk in, you walk in from the first gate. If you, if you come with someone who it's there, if it's their first time, you can see the fear and you have to kind of like tell them, you know what, it's going to be fine. <laughs> but you walk in from the first main gate and you walk with um in south africa we call them wardens or officials that walk with you to take you to you know the the department that you are supposed to go in but when you get there and i remember getting there and i saw the girls were waiting for me already and they they wait for us when we get in there but they were so ready waiting for us you get in and they're just hugging you from the word getting in now, I know you was watching me is going like, really? <laughs> I mean, this, this is a maximum. This, I mean, I have 15, 25, a lot of my girls are on life. And just there, the hospital told me, Connie, the secret is love. That's it. The secret is love. And it just became so real because I looked at these awesome ladies and I just hugged them, but it, it just was with so much love. As you hug each one, and I was just looking at them. And in me, 
I believe, this is what I believe, they are able to see the expressive love of God. Because I go in there and so many people and so many things you are doing, the moment someone does not sense judgment, okay, the moment this person doesn't actually sense any judgment, now, depending on anyone's view <laughs> uh, regarding people who you feel are convicts and criminals, let me tell you something, even Jesus loves them. And the moment you enter in there, they can easily sense fake and they can easily smell fake and the love of God. They can feel it. That they, you see them transforming as they see you. You see them trying to do what they feel the word of God is saying, but more they feel so open to tell you what is going on in their lives. Now, what am I saying about this? You as a child of God, you are deeply loved. If me, a selfish human being, can go in a situation like that, in, a, in, in an institution like that, and you know what? Just open my heart to love. And I want to say to you, this love cannot be conies. This love cannot be me. It is a love that I received from God because I got to understand who I am and how much he has loved me. And I opened myself that he can pour in that love and that love comes naturally. That love is not forced. It comes naturally through me. Why? Because I have received the love of my father. That is how deeply you are loved. And regardless of where you find yourself and what you are going through and what struggles you are going through, I want to say to you, if, regardless of how deep you have gone into sin, I want to say to you, his love will never change. So get to understand that your father in heaven loves you the same. His love does not change. He loves you the same. And you know what? He wants that same love to pick you up from where you are. Not to run away, but to pick you up from where you are. Clean you up. And you know what? You get to realize and take in that love and embrace it. And when you embrace it, you repent and change. Why? Because the Father loves you so much. So as a child of God, you are really deeply loved. You are not rejected. You are not alone. You are deeply loved. You are also the beloved of God. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine us being called the beloved of God. You know, now one area that you can see God using this scripture is when Jesus okay, was being baptized and the voice of God came and said that is my son my beloved son that is where it was used beloved the word beloved now we can see here also that you and I according to this scripture in Romans we are the beloved of God we are also chosen. Uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are chosen. We are known and we belong. And remember, we do not choose him. The Bible says he chose us. How amazing is that? That God chooses you even while you are still deep in sin, while you are still carrying sin, and while you are still in shame, he looks at you and he chooses you. And he says, that is my child. That is my beloved child. That is my masterpiece. You know, and that is who you are. Now you have to align your mindset with how God sees you. Child of God, God sees you as chosen. You are not just a number random. He says you he even knows the number of hair on your head. That is how chosen you are as a child of God. You are chosen. You are picked. You are known. You are not just chosen. You are accepted with your uniqueness, with your personality, with your giftings, with everything around you. You are accepted. You don't have to fit in. 
you were accepted as a child of God the way you were blended, the way you were created. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. To the praise, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. You do not. And I, and so many times this is so evidently seen when we give our life to Christ that we start to do things to be accepted. And I want to say to you, child of God, you are accepted. He created you with your uniqueness. He wired you like that. And he loves you like that. And you have to understand that your uniqueness was made by God. And you are accepted as you are you are also forgiven acts chapter 13 and verse 38 to 39 therefore let it be known by you brethren that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins verse 39 and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you would not be justified by the law of moses we have been forgiven by the blood of jesus we have been forgiven. And I believe the most difficult thing is not being forgiven, but the most difficult thing that we have to align ourselves to understand is accepting the forgiveness. Because so many Christians, you know, the enemy comes to accuse us, to condemn us now and then. And we forget that, you know what? The Father has forgiven us. And we remind ourselves of what we did, of what we are doing wrong. As long as you confess your sins, okay, you are forgiven as a child of God. And when the voice of the enemy comes to condemn you, to tell you you are not enough, when the voice of the enemy comes and reminds you, you have to tell the voice of the enemy who your God is. He has forgiven you. And it's so important for us to tell the enemy who our God is. Our God is love. And he has fully, not just washed us, but forgiven us. You are also saved. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 to verse 6. Even when we are dead in trespass, made us alive together with Christ. And raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus Child of God, you are not just saved, but you are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. What are we saved from? We are saved from death. Remember, when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, death became evident. And when Jesus came, we were able to be saved from the bondage of death into eternal life now if that is not the best gift of all let me tell you something that is the best gift of all you have also been saved from any condemnation of the enemy you have been redeemed you have been saved from any attacks of the enemy you are already saved you are not going to be saved you have been delivered redeemed because of the Savior who has saved you from the hands of the enemy into his marvelous life. And these are things we have. I don't know. These are the kind of things we have to put on our wall. In, in our car. These are the kind of things we have to put in our offices. Next to your desk. Just to remind yourself of who God sees you to be. Because the enemy is going to come. And it's going to be telling you who you are not. And you know what we always do? We believe it. Because the enemy is the, the father of lies. And we do actually believe him. But if we are so reminded by who God says we are and who God sees us to be, we are going to be able to take our authority and we are going to stand as how God sees us. You are also a child of God. First John chapter 3 verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed that we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. We are children of God. We are not going to become children of God. We are now children of God through Christ Jesus. You are redeemed. 
as a child of God. Colossians chapter 1 and verses 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. This redemption is just coming from the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been redeemed. And today, as a child of God, you have to understand that is how he sees you. He also says you have been adopted. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 to verse 6. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Remember, you have been adopted into this kingdom and into this family. You are no longer an outsider. You are are now a child of God adopted into this family by Jesus Christ. You can believe what is for the sons and the daughters of God. Okay, so the word of God and the Bible has so much, so much inheritance for the children of God. Now, you as a child who has been adopted into this family, you can take hold of those promises. You should not look at those promises and think they are not for you as a child of God. They are for you because now you are a child of God. You are no longer a beggar. You don't have to beg for what is yours as a child of God. Why? Because you have been adopted into this family through Christ Jesus. You are also reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We have been reconciled. Where we went far from him, we have been brought back to our God through Jesus Christ. You have also been justified. You are justified by faith as a child of God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is all by faith, not by works. You are also set free. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Child of God, you are free. Freedom is not just a promise, but it's what God says and sees you to be. You are free and you have to claim that promise because that promise is not for tomorrow, but that promise is for you today. God sees you free because this freedom has already been given to us through Christ Jesus. The price has been paid. And when we don't take claim of these things that God sees us to be, it's actually like we sit there and we actually don't see what God sees. And we are not going to walk in the freedom. You are free and you are free today. You are not waiting to be free tomorrow. You are not waiting to be free when you go to heaven. God sees you as someone who is actually free. Claim it. And not just claim it, if it means that you have to contend against the lies of the enemy, that you are not free, that you are not free, that you know what, you are condemned and you are, um, should I say, doomed or you are tormented by the spirits of darkness, you have to claim your freedom today. And you have to say, no, I am free. And again, sorry to bring you so many of my... <laughs> my stories, I find that the more someone is told something, the more they get to believe it. Now, before we were Christians, we were told these things. And we were told these things over and over and over and over and over again. And our mind believed these things. Now, when you have given your life to Christ, let me say you are how old? Let us say 21, 22, 35. Now, you are believing the Lord to renew your mind. And it is a process that you have to align daily so that you can actually see yourself the way the Lord sees. Now, imagine how I, I speak to my ladies in the prison and I tell them you are free. You know, the first time you tell them that statement, they look at you and they don't actually understand. 
<laughs> what you're talking about. Because you know what? They are not free according to the system. They are not free. And we fully understand that. They have to pay. They, they have to face the consequences of their action. But when we go in there, we tell them you are spiritually free. And this is something you have to say again and again. You have to say it again. You are forgiven. You are not condemned. You are now a child of God. And these things, when you are in a situation like my ladies are in, looks a simple thing. Because you know what? The walls around them are telling them you are not free. You are not delivered. But now when we go in there, we have to hammer it and say it again and again. I want to say, I want to tell you something. The first day you say it and come down five months, you have been bringing the word of God, the word of freedom, the word of God to renew these ladies. I am telling you something, if there would be a video <laughs> showing these ladies on the first day you go in there, when the year begins, and, and May or June, you will be amazed. The freedom regarding also mental health, situations like depression, I have so much testimony of so many that have been set free from Things like that because in their mind they, they believe they were bound. Okay, now you come in and bring Christ and you tell them freedom. And you can look at these ladies and you're like, wow, what a transformation. Is it my words? No, it's not my words. It's actually this word that we speak that they start to see themselves through the eyes of God. Now, you as a child of God also have to understand that if you want to be able to not only grow in the Lord, but to stand in the true authority as a child of God, you have to see yourself as God sees you. And, the God, and God says, you are free. Okay? You as a child of God are free. Okay, so it goes on and says, um, you have been made righteous. And that is Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. I'm trying to look at the time here. <laughs> the, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay? That is you are free. You have been made righteous. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become righteousness of God in him so you are in right standing with god because of the work of the cross through jesus christ you are also a new creation the old things are gone and now god sees you as a new creation so second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new and these are the scriptures that we give our ladies every saturday we say you are a new creation you are a new creation the moment you you do counseling with them and you get to understand that it's not just someone who is in those four walls of a prison but i want to say even christians and i want to start with me too i am still walking onto a journey of fully seeing myself how god sees me because the enemy comes again and again and he says to you again and again you look at you look at what you did look at how you were and you have to remind the enemy again how god sees you and how does god see you through his word god says you are a new creation he also sees you as holy Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You are holy. So you can stand in the holy place of God and, and, and pray. You can stand in the holy altar of God and your prayers are heard in heaven. Don't go to the holy altar of God to pray and see yourself like a sinner you know, and you are not going to stand confident and believing your prayers because you believe that you are not holy. God sees you as holy. So when you go before him, believe that you are acceptable 
but you are righteous through Christ Jesus, but you are also holy and your prayers are being received before him. You are complete as a child of God. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. You are not waiting to be delivered and to be made complete. You are actually complete in him. That's what the word of God says. You are a member of the Christ body. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 29 to 30. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of this body, of his flesh and of his bones. You are part of the body and you are a member of that body. And don't disguise yourself. Don't underlook yourself. You are so important. Just as when you look at the body and you see the last smallest toe, how important it is to bring balance to a human body. That is how you are. You are so important to the body. And I want to encourage you as a student of the word, rise up, rise up and be part of this body. Don't just say I am part of the body, but rise up and be part of the body. Rise up and serve, rise up and, and allow the giftings that God has given you so that the body can be edified so that the body can go to maturity, to being perfected, to becoming like Christ. Each of us, part of the body, are important for the full function of the body. You are also blessed, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with many spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. You are not going to be blessed. And you don't have to run around looking for blessings as we see so many Christians. You are already blessed. You have received Jesus Christ in your life. God sees you blessed. Receive the blessing that God has given you as his child. Grace, you are grace filled. Romans chapter 5 verses 17. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So you have to understand that grace, you are filled with the grace through Jesus Christ. It has been made available for us, so receive it as a child of God. You are also an ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God was pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. You are a representative of the full kingdom of God. You are an ambassador of that kingdom here on earth. You are healed. You are not going to receive healing. You are healed. That's how God sees you. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness. By whose stripes, hear this, by whose stripes we were healed. I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible doesn't say by whose stripes we are going to be healed. The Bible says by whose stripes we were healed. So as children of God, we just have to claim that healing because it has already been done. You are also a heir of God. Romans chapter 8 verses 16 to 17. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You are an heir in this kingdom. You receive everything. You are part of inheriting everything that you see Jesus Christ as inherited. You are uniquely gifted. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Remember, each one as a child of God, 
is uniquely gifted. Now, on this point, I just want to say to you, as you are studying, and I know all of us on this platform are studying, have you asked the Holy Spirit what your gifting is? Okay, now remember, the Word of God says we have to ask, and then we also have to desire the giftings. But when the Holy Spirit reveals the gift that you carry or the gifts that you carry, Please understand that those gifts have been given to you, not to just talk about them or sit on these gifts, but they have been given so that God's power can be manifested through you. You are supposed to serve the other parts of the body with these gifts to bring edification, to stir faith, and so that the body can be fully rich to the perfection of Christ jesus you are uniquely so gifted and you have to believe it and not start desiring for other people's gifts you must understand that i am so uniquely gifted and if all of us can actually get to understand that and not just understand and believe it i believe the church or the kingdom of god is going to expound in such an explosion that the world around us will desire to run and to be part of this kingdom of God. So God sees you as a variable and precious. Okay, God himself through the Holy Spirit has decided to make you and I his temple. By our acceptance of what Jesus did on the cross, we have partnered with God in establishing and building his kingdom. Because of his love for us, he shows and because of the love he demonstrates through us. Remember, you are part of this kingdom and this is how God sees you. It can be so awesome if we can get these pointers here that we have in these notes and we put them somewhere in our lounge for our young children, for our younger generation. Because parents who is watching me or guardian who is watching me, we have an identity crisis with the young generation. And if our children can understand who God sees them to be, I believe we are going to pass on the baton well to the next generation. So get these pointers, put them in the car, if you have to sing them with your children, but let them see and know and understand. And the more you say these things, the more they're actually going to believe who they are supposed to be and who God sees them to be. Not who the world calls them to be, but who God sees them to be. And the more they see that, the more they are going to stand confident and firm of who they are from the kingdom of God and God's view. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Come and have your way. Help us, oh God, that we may see ourselves in the way you see us. We pray and ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a blessed week. And God bless you.